Spencer Harp here with Sharp Engineering. Um, this video could get rather lengthy. I'm going to try to cover the important stuff first. Uh, a lot of people are, have questions about the wiring harness, um, where, what plug is what, and how to hook it up once you receive it from us. So I'm going to start with how to hook it up if you've just received a harness and uh, want to get your car running. Uh, we're trying to do a better job of labeling this stuff when it goes out the door, but if you have a harness on another car and you're trying to rewire it or whatever, this information will be useful for you. Uh, some of the earlier harnesses ha had a slightly different configuration uh, for the wires up at the dash. So if you run into an issue, give me a call and I'll be glad to walk you through that. Um, but the harnesses that you receive from us now will most likely have four or five wires coming out of the end of it. Now a lot of that depends on the year model and what we're doing. Um, but you're looking for essentially an orange and white, a red, a black and white, a black and yellow, You'll have a yellow with a green stripe. Uh, and occasionally you'll have a yellow with a blue stripe up here. Make sure you know the difference between blue and green. Um, it's important because that yellow with a blue stripe is nothing more than a factory tack signal. If you're using say a Viper tack or something like that, that signal will not work with a Micron 5. Uh, a Micron 5, all you have to do is take the black wire that you would normally use to wrap around a spark plug bring it over here to one of your coil plugs and solder it to one of the wires that is not orange and white. So, you know, you got orange and white, which is going to be your power throughout your harness. And then you'll have a signal wire. And on this particular coil, it's white and blue, um, but it doesn't matter what coil you jump on. Uh, just as long as you jump on one of the non common wires. So not on the orange and white, but just solder that wire or piggyback that wire onto uh, one of the, the non-common wires. So back over here to the ignition switch. This is a, a typical quick car ignition switch. Uh, from the factory, it comes with a jumper that goes from your hot side over to your push button. So when you press the push button, you send power out to go to your starter. Uh, that works on all your V8 cars and everything else, but that will not work on our configuration. So my recommendation is to take this plug, this pigtail, remove it, throw it away, uh, and then wire it up you know, the correct way. The only two wires that need to go to this push button on our harness is going to be a black and white, which is going to be your ground, and the black and yellow. The black and yellow on the motorcycle is a factory circuit that goes through the clutch lever. Um, so if your harness is not using these two wires on the push button, your secondary throttle body may or may not be opening up. The flaps or, or, or and the injectors may not be firing. We've ran into that with the 0607s. If the 0607s use a positive circuit for the starter, um, it puts it in essentially a neutral map and it doesn't allow the secondaries to come in, which could be why your motor's running really, really lean uh, at 12,000 RPM and above. So um, backing up, the only two wires that go to this push button are going to be the black and white and the black and yellow. So these jumpers again will be removed. This will be tossed, you know, thrown away. Black and white, <coughs> black and yellow. Only two wires that go there. Then if you jump over here to any one of your ignition switches, you're just going to have two additional wires um, that will be your red and your orange and white that are, that are going to be going to the ignition switch. So these two go to the ignition switch, these two go to the push button. Um, this particular harness has the, uh, it's the yellow with a green stripe coming up here to it. That is sending 12 volts to the starter solenoid, so it needs to be tied to the orange and white. So on this particular configuration, these two wires go to the push button. This is your all-time hot. This is coming from your battery. This right here, these two will get power when you turn the ignition switch on. So these two go to one side of your ignition switch. This one goes to the other side of your ignition switch. So if that's all you need, you can stop the video here. However, I'm gonna go through the harness in a little bit more detail and kind of explain what these plugs are and where they go. Um, and I'll start up here at the ECU. These are your two ECU plugs. You have to be careful with those. Uh, if, if A, they've got our seals on them, so if you remove those, you'll, it'll indicate that you removed them. But the pins in here are very fragile. So unplugging and plugging it back in 
um, is not a good idea. And when you mount this thing in the car, we, we never mount them facing up. You know, if you're pressure washing a car, you could very easily pressure wash water down into those plugs. So always make sure that it's at a minimum mounted sideways, but we prefer to have this plug mounted, you know, the ECU mounted in the car with the plugs facing down. That way no water can get into them. Uh, this little pod here is essentially a grounding location. Uh, it's a junction where all these little ground wires come together and there's a clip inside there that connect those. It's so you can isolate individual circuits for diagnostic, um, but it could be a problem area, especially if your car has been hit with a fire extinguisher or something like that, because fire extinguisher is extremely you know, um, aggressive in terms of oxidizing wires. Uh, so if your car has been hit with a fire extinguisher, you're probably gonna have wiring harness problems, if not uh, instantly, but very soon. Uh, just because that stuff gets all over the harness and corrodes everything. Um, in the event that you do have to spray your car with a fire extinguisher for whatever reason, I would recommend pulling the harness off, cleaning everything really good, putting dielectric grease back on all the plugs and plugging it back in. Uh, this white plug here is a diagnostic port and also the same port that you would plug in a gear indicator. Uh, you can use a Hiltec OBD scan tool, plug it in, and you can get data streams from everything in the car from TPS position to water temp, battery voltage, etc. Hiltec makes a very cool um, OBD reader, like I said, that plugs in. It does require a laptop, uh, but it will allow you to see all of your data streams and troubleshoot anything that's going on with your car. Um, this sensor over here that's directly by the ECU, this guy looks like it has a vacuum hose barb on it. That is the barometric pressure sensor. So that measures atmospheric pressure. And so if you change elevations or whatever, it automatically corrects the fuel map accordingly based on the barometric pressure. So there's no vacuum line that goes here. You just want to make sure, you know, it's also pointed in a direction that's not going to be sprayed directly with a pressure washer. And you want to make sure it's not plugged up with dirt or a dirt bobber. Uh, continuing down the harness, um, here recently, all of our harnesses, we've been putting this little pigtail on them. Uh, we tried to, originally we were, you know, splicing and putting the resistors in the harness throughout the harness. Um, it made it, troubleshooting the harness extremely difficult. So what we did was any resistors that are in here that are emulating sensors that are no longer in the harness, they're off on this pigtail. So if we have a problem, we know exactly where to go look. Don't bend this uh, in the center or anything. Like I said, it's got resistors and stuff in here. Try to keep it as straight as possible um, and just, you know, tape it up out of the way. Going on down the harness, we've got, this is a uh, relay here. This is your fuel pump relay. Um, this plug here, so you can all see it. It goes to your starter solenoid. So this is where your harness gets its power from. Uh, these two red wires are actually power feeding into your harness. And the two wires on the black, I mean on the back, are black and yellow and the yellow and green. Um, the same black and yellow and yellow and green that we saw at the other end of the harness these are your two that go to your solenoid so one of these would get power which would be the uh, uh the, the yellow and green and then the other one if you, when you ground it out that's when it motor spins over and it starts all right so continuing on you got a plug here that's got two green wires in it one's got a white stripe one solid this goes to your crankshaft positioning sensor if this is not plugged in or if it's broken or if there's oil in it or anything like that, it will your, your engine will not run correctly. Um, somewhere in the very you know near vicinity of that plug, you'll have a gear position plug. So it's going to have a pink wire, a blue wire, and a black and white. Uh, the black and white again is ground. Anywhere in this harness that you see a black and white wire, it is a ground wire. And the other two wires are your signal wires coming back um, to the ECU to tell the ECU what gear you're in. Next to that, you're going to have this bigger black and white wire. This bigger black and white wire should plug in to your main wire that goes to your battery negative and to your block. So you're going to have a wire coming from the negative side of your battery to your block, and it has a jumper that comes off that this plugs into, and that's how the ECU gets its ground, and the harness gets its ground. Uh, if this is not plugged in, you run the risk of frying something um, because it's going to go searching for a ground. Somewhere close to that, you're going to have this other pigtail here. This pigtail has this boot on it. Um, you can cut the boot off, remove it. We just haven't done it. But the plug inside of that is the plug that goes to the STVA. The STVA is that black box on the side of your throttle body um, that controls the upper set of butterflies in the throttle body. Uh, what the upper set of 
butterflies actually do, we program, program them to be open 100%, 100% of the time. But from the factory, it helps with like transitioning in between gears, torque fall off and stuff like that, and taming the bike down in between shifts so that it doesn't wheelie every time you shift. So the OEM uses it for a bunch of different reasons. We program it to be open 100% of the time. Um, it's very common that this little pigtail that's got this boot on it is often not included in a harness that you purchase. But conveniently, this plug here will actually plug right into the STVA without the jumper harness. It just doesn't have a clip on it. So if you don't have this pigtail, no worries. You can plug this straight in and be fine. Um, right there by that, we usually come out of the harness with this extension that we put on to go back to the fuel pump. And then continuing on down, um, we're going to get into some of the other sensors further down the harness. But you'll have a leg that comes off here. This is your injector leg. Um, so all of these wires, they have a gray and yellow or it's like a turquoise and yellow. Um, these go to your injectors. And all of the ones that have a turquoise wire on them go to your upper set of uh, upper set of injectors. So if it's got the gray wire on the bottom side of it, it's going to a lower set of injectors. Going to the end of the harness, here we've got the uh, this plug here has got two wires in it, a brown and black, and then a excuse me, a black and brown, and then a black and blue. That plugs into the coolant temperature sensor, which is directly underneath the throttle body, closer toward the driver's side. Shooting on across, we're going to jump into another plug that goes to the manifold pressure sensor. It looks very similar to the atmospheric pressure sensor, um, but that one is connected to your throttle bodies. It should have four vacuum lines that come off of it uh, that connect to a T and then come back to this manifold uh, pressure transducer. So it's got three wires in it. It's shaped slightly different than that one, but when it's, uh, if it's not plugged in, the car will not run appropriately at low, at low end. However, it will run okay in the upper RPMs. These bikes are programmed to run off um, MAP base tuning for lower RPM and idle or lower throttle position and idling but when you're actually in the throttle and using the accelerator it transitions over to looking at solely the TPS signal which is throttle position and controlling the fuel based on throttle position. So we'll continue on out the harness we jump on to this last leg here this is the leg that goes across your valve cover it's got all four of your coils in it um, it's very easy to mix up the last two coils, um, so just make sure you're looking at it. Usually the furthest one is going to have that white with blue stripe, but those are your coil plugs there. They should all have a little um, grommet on the inside of them that seals them from water and moisture. Uh, so there'll be four of those. On the 08 and newer motors, they don't have a mechanical idle adjuster. So they use a idle air control valve, which is basically like a little solenoid plunger configuration. Um, it, this plugs in, it's on the front side of your throttle body um, in between cylinders one and two. Continuing on out the harness, you've got this gray plug here, cylindrical. That's your air temp sensor. Um, it needs to be there uh, and have a sensor plugged into that. Again, that's a really an, an overlooked item. Uh, when you're purchasing a motor kit or a harness is the air temp sensor it's never included and then last but not least we've got a plug here this goes into your rectifier so you've got uh, wires that come out of the side of the motor um, that are three yellow wires they go up and plug into one plug on the rectifier and then this plug here plugs in the other side of the rectifier this plug can be eliminated you can go directly to your battery if you want to if you look at the rectifier, you'll see there's two red wires and two black wires. That's just two grounds and two positives. So if you were to cut this plug off and run it straight to your battery, it would be completely fine. And sometimes I recommend it because if you're going to have any kind of electrical problem, it's usually going to be next to your rectifier because these plugs right here carry a lot of current, especially when you have a dead battery. Uh, and they tend to overheat, melt, cook. Sometimes they'll cause issues. And if this wire burns up in the harness, it's going to wreck your whole harness whereas if you had this isolated and it burn up then it would just your harness would be intact and the charging system would uh, just need to be maintained 
So if you've got any questions about the wiring harness or any of the, you know, the stuff that we're talking about today, feel free to shoot me a message on Facebook or reach out to us. Um, but that should cover it for the 08, 09 wiring harness stuff. Um, I appreciate your time.